Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. It is a great joy that we greet the church and you who are watching us through Zoom and through media with the peace of, glorious peace of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to read the word of the Lord in the book of Psalms, chapter number 36. 36. Psalms 36. Psalms 36. Only a single verse that says the following. Because for with you, the church can repeat with me. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see the light. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, your word has been read. We can now feel your presence through the songs that we just sang. And from the moment that we began the service, your glory was, has been manifested. And Lord, by faith, we contemplate the beauty of your holiness. And now, as we meditate on your word, visit our hearts and minds clearing up our minds regarding what you desire to make us understand through your word tonight. We pray, therefore, asking that you remove any barrier from our minds and hearts. Give us a better understanding, complete understanding of your perfect and pleasing will for us tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. I would like to, to remind, just remind the spiritual gift that has already been shared during the period of praise. The Spirit speaks, the gift speaks of a, a, a trip that was dangerous, a crossing that was of great risk, where a, a family on a, on a bridge of uh, wood and ropes, they were crossing and the instruction for the father uh, head hold of the family was not to look behind and to keep a strong and firm stri stride and then the crossing would be victorious and they would get to their destination safe and sound and when this gift was shared the holy spirit brought to our to my memory a verse that very well known of the church but that it is worth for us to repeat this verse it is located in First Corinthians that says, Therefore, be firm and study. The same expression the Holy Spirit today is using in the spiritual gift. Be study and constant. In where? In the work of the Holy Spirit. Be study and constant and abundant in the kingdom of God because your work is not in vain. And my brethren, we have lived days that are labored. We can't even say that we can give a name to this bridge of the vision. We can even call it the bridge 2020, 2021, the pandemic. Uh, what a terrible situation we're going through. And this fact that is taking place in the whole world has touched on the heart of many, has altered the behavior of many, that caused many people to commit acts um, unwise acts because of the lack of a direction uh, the ones who don't know do not know God the way we do I particularly think how can they go out in the morning to go to work or go to school whatever it might be and how can they go back home at the end of the day and lay their head on the pillow to sleep without having the love and care and the peace that the, our Lord gives us it is practically impossible to imagine. And the world walks and disturbed. We have heard news and more news of what that the things are, are dangerous and difficult and they're not easy. 
like in the spiritual gift that the Lord has given to us. But in periods like this, like I mentioned, guided by the Holy Spirit of God, the Word of God asks us to be firm, constant, and abundant in the kingdom of God. Because our work, our labor is not in vain. Even if we do it with selfish interest, the Lord, even even though, even so, He does doesn't look to our faults. We might think, oh, I'm going to me de dedicate myself on the kingdom of God because I'll receive a return. The Lord is not worried with this because the reward has already been guaranteed with His salvation. But many of the things the Lord has given us, we're not messengers of tragedies. What we said in the introduction, it was to emphasize what the Holy Spirit has done in the life of the ones who have the Lord and the ones who understand that there is need for us to be involved in the kingdom, which is called the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, kingdom, the work of the Holy Spirit. In the text, it was speaking about two different things. The text speaks about light, and on the other hand, it is the opposite of darkness, and the text speaks about life, which is the opposite of death. And because in you is the fountain of life. If you entered here tonight, and when you heard this, the gift, you thought, well, it's me, it's my family. We're going through a situation in which everything is about to crumble. It seems like it's not going to work out. I'm not going to get to the end. And the Lord is telling you tonight, He is the fountain of life. He is giving you and I a hope tonight. And this hope, only we can only experience in Him. The text says, in, in you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Maybe some may think, isn't there a confusion here? In your light, we see light. But in the Bible, the Word of God, there is no confusion. God is not a God of confusion. Much on the contrary, the things of God came to clarify, to shed light. And the light here is mentioned twice so that we may understand that in the midst of the world in which we are living, there is a group of people that think that they know the light. They think that they are under the light, and there are a group of people that trust on the self-esteem or in, in their own baggage, and they make... Uh, they're out of their own strong arm, their own victories, and out of their own efforts and their own structures. They think that that's where is their direction, and they believe that they are in the light. But tonight we're speaking about light not only by pure chance, but by the fact that we are studying for so many days now about the parable of the ten virgins. And there we see clearly the light and the darkness being explained, being discouraged, and being dis, uh, dis um, analyzed in such a, an abundant way. And we have there uh, uh, a lamp. A lamp is something very common for the days of the Old Testament and to, in Jesus' time. And that's why Jesus had used that parable so that they would understand something that was spiritual through something that they knew in their daily lives. And when you see the parable, we understand that all, all the virgins that had something, they had something common. They had, had all been invited. All of them had received the, the garments of the festivity. They had received the special garments for for the wedding in the Jesus' time, they all had the lamp. They all had oil inside of the lamp. They had a wick and they had fire. Apparently, when we look from afar, everything looked normal. There were ten virgins. 
the ten brides, and apparently everything was equal amongst them. But there was a moment in the parable in which Jesus made a point to show that there was a difference. Because in the parable comes the expression, when the groom was delayed, and I want it to be very clear to all of us that the groom didn't delay because he, he was negligent or because he was like us. No, he delayed in purpose because there was there a trial who's testing who was going to be the person or the, the appropriate brides to be beside him. So then he delayed for the last moment, the moment was which no one would expect. According to the Jewish marriage, they could last f for seven days and the, the groom could have arrived in the first day up to all the way to the seventh day. And the word says that when the groom delayed, they fell asleep. They slumbered. And there was a moment in which the sleeplessness was stronger and the weight of the tiredness and them um, waiting, you know, the, and they're waiting for one day, the night that they didn't come, the other day passed, the other night it, he didn't come, and that caused them to get tired. And the Bible said they all fell asleep, but there was a cry. There was a cry, and the, the cry woke them all up. And the moment of uh, awakening, it was shown a difference that was vital in the text and the text I just read is in you is the fountain of life without it you cannot live and at that moment they realized that they had already passed and days were passing and the oil needed to be replenished and five of those vir virgins the brides they didn't have they have a reservoir something that was going to resolve their problem, and the other five didn't have. And there was a desperation. There was a desperation because they now were in darkness. And in that desperation, they even plead to the ones who had a reservoir of oil to share with them. But my brethren, we know that prophetically, the experience of my mother and my father, my son and daughter, they will not lead me to eternity. The experience of your brother and sister, of your uncle, your predecessor, they will not bring you to eternity. And you know that you and I, we need to have our own experience with God. And the answer of the prudence was a prophetic answer. Uh, we should not share, otherwise both of us are going to go short. I cannot share my, expect that my, through my experience you achieve salvation and you cannot do the same with me. That's why when we preach to our children, to our intermediary and our youth, we are placing their hearts the desire to have an experience of, or with the Lord but because there will come a moment in which they will not be under our tutelage and there will come a moment in, in which they will have to decide, yes, I want God, I want the Lord, I want, I want the fountain of life, I want light. Or through their own free will, they will be able to say, no, I want darkness, I want death, I want perdition. No one can control anyone. No one can convince anyone. There is only one that can, which is the Holy Spirit of God. He is the one who has brought us here and look, there is nothing attractive for us to be here, humanly speaking. There's nothing. There's nothing socially, nothing that we could say, hey, I'm going to go there because I'm going to satisfy this and that human desire. No, we came here because here there was the flow of life, flowing, bringing life, bringing joy and to our heart. And we knew that as we arrived here, we would meet with our Lord and Savior, and He was already waiting for us. He was already expecting us, and the, in the moment in which you kneel down and plead for the blood of Jesus, He already uh, uh, is clearing up our eyes so that we would see the light. My brother, the lamp fell uh, would fit inside of our, the palm of our hand. 
somebody might say, oh, I'm not going to carry the lamp because it's too heavy or too big. No, it was the size of the palm of our hand. And according to that time, they had to carry it in front of their chest so that it would light up their face so that on the way they would see the one who was coming and they would see you so that you could greet one another or if there is any business between you, you could meet. The ones who travel, they would identify it with the lamp that was in their, heart, their head in front of their chest and at the same position the lamp also clear, illuminated the path so that they would not trip and fall or fall into a precipice or they would not look, uh, lo lose the stride of their walk and my brother and sister salvation is the same way it is light there's no excuse for us not to carry it or to reject it our heart with the blessing of the Holy Spirit with the salvation it is on the palm of our hands. So, in other words, you and I, we have the decision. You and I, that can, they have to say, I want God again. I want heaven. I want eternity. You are the one who have to decide. And it is at the level of your chest where our vital organs are. And most importantly, prophetically, is the heart. That's why David says, I kept your word in my heart so I would not sin against you, Lord. And tonight, the Holy Spirit of God is doing this to us. He's alerting us. He's awakening us up to keep His word in our heart. And is a lamp on its own would not resolve. Only one lamp was not, would not be enough. It had to be filled with oil. A lamp filled with oil would still not be enough. It also needed to have a wick. A lamp filled with oil with a wick was not enough. They also needed the fire so that it would be complete, so that would provide the the role that was it was designed for, which was to illuminate. In the case of the parable, it was vital. Because when the groom, when the cry was heard, here is the groom, come out to meet with him. They had a lamp, they had the wick. In the past, they had oil and fire, but in the moment, there was only a lamp and wick, but they didn't have the fire. And this was what determined different the destiny of five of the ten brides and, and the other five. Because with the oil and the wick and the wick lit, the groom would come and would see the face of the bride and he would know, yes, this is the one that I invited. This is the one that my father provided for, uh, provided the wedding garments and they are wearing the, those garments. Come, blessed of my father, come to receive the kingdom that is prepared for you. But the other ones, since there was no light, there was no way to identify them. Even if they had been invited, even though they had been they had received the the wedding garments, the special garments. The groom was not able to see them because they had the absence of light. So now, do you understand, my brethren? Because in you is the flow, of the fountain of life. In your light, we'll see the light. God loved the world in such a way that sent that sent His only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in Him may not perish, but have eternal life. It was opened up a, a way, a way of life, a way of light. In the same way that the people living in Egypt crossed the Red Sea, dry feet, God opened up a path where there was no path. God sent His Son, and that is the path, this is the light. He Himself said, I am the path, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father where other than through me. Therefore, Tonight, the Lord is reminding us, the Holy Spirit is reminding us that in Him is the flow of li the fountain of life. Even though the world may speak of, about death through science and through the facts that are taking place, the faithful church lives life because the church is near to the fountain of life. And from it uh, flows life for those that don't have life. How many the Lord is going to place in your, in your path so that you can flow this water and, and this light? So that in the Lord, it may be shown through your life and your testimony so that your lamp may shine and your face may show 
that you are a child of God and you want the ones who are going to live, live with God in heaven and so that you can offer to them also eternal life and invite them for salvation. In your light, we'll see light. Many call themselves Christians. The world, generally speaking, they call themselves Christians. If someone is a, goes to a trip, they're going to travel, they go with God. The one who goes, looks to the one who stays, stay with God. If you sneeze, God bless you. But God is far away from them. They don't have an intimacy. They may know the light from hearing about it, but the faithful church knows the light that one day was revealed to them, Jesus Christ. In your light, we'll see the light. And tonight we are here because one day we had an experience with this light. One day we drank of this water from this fountain. One day we looked to the Lord and the Lord illuminated our life and He has shown our path. And on the path, He was speaking about Jesus. So now we have Jesus in our heart and the peace that we feel from serving the Lord. My brother and sister, I ask you, is there this kind of peace anywhere that place? Independent of the circumstance, independent of financial situation, social, economic, or even intellectual. In the Lord, we have a peace and we have a tranquility and a security. Today was uh, speaking with a group of servants. And we're speaking vaccine, no vaccine, virus, no virus. Strain here, strain there. We trust in the Lord. We've vaccinated, we trust in the Lord. If you didn't vaccinate, we trust in the Lord. We've already had the virus, we trust the Lord. If uh, we're, infected, we're not infected, we still trust the Lord because He's the God of salvation. He's the one to whom we need to cling to. He is our fountain of life. In your light, we see the light. Bless me, the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. And tonight, we, we leave this place understanding that He is the light for our life. And this life will lead us to heavenly Jerusalem. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus.
Lord your God. Lamp lit, filled with the oil. In other words, filled with the Holy Spirit. The, the sealed with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, filling the presence of the Lord every, every moment without forgetting. Oil of res a reservoir. Seek prayer. Many times the Lord wakes us up in the early dawn. It's not by chance. He does not remove your sleeping vein. It's just so that you can fill your your vessel because the days are evil, difficult days, days in which we are close to the return of the Lord Jesus, close to hear the cry. There comes the groom. Let's go to meet with him. So then the lamp will be lit. The uh, face will be lit. You're going to enter into the heavenly mansions. That's where is there now. Uh, uh, glory to Jesus. Most of Jesus, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The church, praising the name of the Lord. Because He is the flow of life, the fountain of life, and His light. We, in His light, we meet Jesus. In His light, we see the true light. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go to Jesus. We're going to have now a word of glorification to the Lord for the blessing of being saved and be going on the path toward Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem. Lord, we praise your name. We adore you, Lord. We don't even have words, Lord, to thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us, Lord, because you have taken us from the darkness and brought us into light. We praise you, Lord, because we do not deserve, Lord, but you have revealed yourself to us. Lord, blessed be your name. For the right that today we have of entering into your presence, of listening to your voice, of knowing you, knowing your mysteries, Lord, of knowing, Lord, your project for our lives, which is so wonderful. Lord, we praise you for everything, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How thankful you are, Lord for having been saved, Lord, and being reached by you, Lord. We are about to finish the service, my brethren. The decision is in your hands, in the same way as the lamp was in the palm of our hands. The decision is yours. If you want to be outside of the feast and say, depart from me, I don't know you, or if you want to see here, come, bless of my Father, prepare for the heritage that is prepared for you. Today is the day of salvation. We're going to finish. And you, if you desire, remain where you are. We can pray with you so that you may have the assurance that you have the lamp lit, you have oil, you have fire, and you have a uh, reserve of oil. And you made a decision to be with Christ in the glory. And you understood that in Jesus there is a, f is a fountain of life. In your light, we saw the light. We're going to pray tonight. And after prayer, we're going to give assistance to whoever desire. Beloved Father, we offer this service as adoration to before the Lord. We save our gratitude, the fellowship, the joy with the brethren, the blessing of being able to gather to offer you this service of adoration. Lord God, may our soul be satisfied and that we may be able to retain this food that you have given us tonight and that we may keep the oil and keep our lamp lit and the oil in our, as a reserve and that we may have a life of sanctification so that we may be ready to enter into the glory with you take us home in peace and security we pray in the name of jesus amen amen the church may be seated the group uh, will be playing the instruments softly they may even sing a song if they want and we are here at the disposal to give assistance to anyone and I wish everyone the peace of the Lord and the ones who are online with the peace of the Lord Jesus.
Tomorrow morning we have our Sunday school through YouTube. And at night we have a service at night. That's already informed. We need to reiterate those who have the vaccination daily. In the, they they can come to the service independent of the group that they belong to. Praise to the Lord. Eight forty-five. Eight, uh, group A. The youth is going to go up to their meeting, receive more oil for their reservoir, so that the lamp can remain lit for longer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Peace of the Lord to everyone. Thank you.